Hello everyone, I'm Connor Kennedy, and today I'll be presenting to you the solution to the Isako December 2023 Silver Contest Problem 2 Cycle Correspondence. In this problem, we are given that there are n barns, some k of which are linked up by this path that I have drawn in green, and we know that these two cows have labeled the paths in a different way, or perhaps a different way. So for instance, Bessie has labeled it like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or something. And Annabelle has labeled it, for instance, 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, 6, or something like that. And some of these labels for the different vertices are the same. For instance, uh, both cows labeled this one 4, uh, but lots of the labels are also different, for instance, uh, these label, these are labeled two and three by one cow each. So we're only given the labels of the barns along this cycle here, and we don't know which barn they started with. So another possible labeling that could have been done, and this is the sample input, another possible labeling that could have been done is they all decided to label them exactly the same, so, for instance, you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from Bessie. And we also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from Annabelle. And in this case, the maximum number of same labels you can get is 6, if all of them are labeled the same. However, this is not always possible, because, for instance, if Annabelle had labeled one of the ones along the cycle of 4, and Bessie had no 4s along the cycle, and we know that uh, one of the labels has to be different, at least. Of course, in the problem, we're just given the cycles as a list of numbers, not as a nicely drawn graph. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to determine which ones are labeled the same. So if we want to achieve the maximum number that are labeled the same, we want to match up as many labels in the cycle as possible. So for instance, we have the cycle 2314 from Annabelle and 3124 from Bessie then we want to try and match up as many of these in the cycle as possible. So we're only, we, only know, uh, we only know the labels in the cycle. We don't know where the cycle starts. So we can have that, for instance, Bessie started the cycle here, while Annabelle started it here. Or maybe uh, where Bessie started it here and Annabelle started it here, or something like that. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that their labels could match up. And in fact, we can check every possible way that we can rotate the cycle to see the different ways it can match up. So one possibility is that Bessie has labeled it 3, 1, 2, 4. And another possibility is that we have 1, 2, 4, 3. This is just a rotation of the first one where the 3 went to the end and the rest are shifted. We could also have 2, 4, 3, 1. And we can have finally 4, 3, 1, 2. And we can look at which one of these cycles matches up with the most. And in this case, we have that this last cycle uh, matches up the most with the first one, because this 3 and the 1 correspond to the original. Of course, that's not the only way it could go. We could actually have that Bessie and Annabelle are traveling in opposite directions around the cycle. So maybe Bessie is traveling this way, while Annabelle is traveling this way. Also, I'm kind of mixing the names up, sorry if that confuses you. So if we want to account for this, then all we need to do is actually flip the order we see the cycle. So instead of 3, 1, 2, 4, we can do 4, 2, 1, 3. And then we can do all the cycle rotations the same way we did before. So we can do like 2, 1, uh, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 2, and finally, 3, 4, 2, 1. So uh, we can determine all the possible labelings by taking the cycles, rotating it, and also flipping it and rotating it. So the main solution idea is we want to look at all of these cycles and see which one matches up the best with the original. However, this is unfortunately too slow because each one of these cycles is length n, and we have 2 times n possible cycles in total. 
So if we wanted to check every single one against the original cycle, then we would have to check 2n squared, and unfortunately n is too large for this. So we'll have to find some way to optimize this. And here's the main idea for how we were going to optimize this. Uh, we can notice that every individual number, for instance, if you look at just this 2 here, there's only one cycle, or there's only one shift of the cycle that matches up with that number. So for instance, the 2 only matches up in this cycle, the 1 only matches up in this cycle, the 3 only matches up in this cycle, and the 4 only matches up in this cycle. And, well, that's only accounting for one direction. In the reverse direction, the same thing is true. Uh, the 2 matches up in this cycle, 1 in this cycle, 3 in this cycle, and 4 in this cycle. So if we look for the cycle that has the most of these matches, then we'll be able to find the cycle with the most matches in total. And the way that we can do this quickly is by looking at each individual number, calculating using math which cycle or which shift that it corresponds to, and then adding one to the success count for that shift. So in all, our solution is going to look like this. First, we keep track we keep track of the number of successes for each shift, and we check for each number, for each label. We can find the successful shift using math, and then we add one to the number of successes for that shift. And then once we're done that, we repeat for the backwards cycle, or do it at the same time, it doesn't really matter. And then we just calculate our answer by finding the maximum number of successes. And there's a couple of extra things we need to keep track of. For instance, if a label shows up in Bessie's cycle but doesn't show up in Annabelle's cycle, for instance, then we would have to ignore that label since they can never correspond to each other. And if a label shows up in neither, we can just assume that they both labeled it correctly because that brings it to uh, that brings it to the highest possible. So plus so our answer is going to be max successes plus the number unseen. So yeah, that's the general idea of our solution. Now let's go look at some code. Okay, so here's my C code for this problem. First we do in our input reading. Uh, in the process we keep track of three arrays. First of all, we have our seen array, which is whether we've seen an individual label. Um, we have our A and B arrays, which are just the way we store the cycles. And we also have our indices A array. array. And this is a way we can reverse index into the A array so that we can quickly look up which position a label appears in the A cycle. So first of all, we read in all our A's. Um, we read an A, and then we set our reverse index. So we're saying that the reverse index of the label is the position I. And if we haven't seen the label before, uh, which should always be true for this cycle, but whatever, uh, we set it to true, and then we decrease the number unseen. And then we do the very same thing for the B array, uh, except we don't have to worry about reverse indexing because we only have to worry about that for A. And then, but we do the same thing, where if we see a new label, then we decrease the number unseen. So now we get to the part where we check the cycles. So I keep track of two arrays, one that stores the number of successes for the forwards direction, and, the number, and another that stores the cycles for the backwards direction. So now we're going to look through every label. Uh, first of all, if that label in B does not exist in A, that means that the labels can never correspond, so we can just skip this one. Next, we look at the offset for the forwards direction, and this is just how much we need to shift the uh, how much we need to shift the cycle so that uh, this specific label matches up, and we can calculate this by finding the difference of its position in A and the current shift, and then modding it by k. So this plus k and mod k just make sure that we never 
accidentally have a negative number. And then we add one to the successes of that cycle. And then we can do the very sa same thing for the backwards direction, except instead of uh, instead of just using the a index, then we can use k minus the a index. This is basically implicitly flips the a array and means that we're looking at the cycles backwards now. So we do the same thing for the forwards direction, except we look at the array backwards, and that lets us calculate the backwards offset. And then from there, we add one to the successes. And finally, all we need to do now is see what's the maximum value of each of the arrays. So we look at the maximum of all the successes. We see which one has the most successes. And then we print out the maximum number and the number we have unseen. And yeah, that's going to be our answer. So yep, that's the solution for uh, problem two in December 2023 silver. Uh, thank you for watching.